from the depth instant tutorial. Now this video has been requested a number of times. This time I'll show you how to make a railgun in from the depth. Railguns are not as hard as you might think to make, but they are a little bit of finicky and you need to get a handle around some of the core components to get an understanding on how to make it balanced and how to make them work properly. So in this little instant tutorial, let's start building. We're gonna build our railgun on a turret. Now let's add an all-in-one weapon controller and now we can start building the ammunition. When building railguns, it's easiest to start with the ammunition. So we're going to build a kinetic railgun. Railguns are best suited for kinetics. You can also use chemical shells, but in those cases, the high speed we get from the railgun isn't really as important. And this is why we want to use a railgun. So when you're building railguns, it's uh, smart to go with kinetic damage. Otherwise, you might as well build rail assisted or just gunpowder. In any case, uh, under the casings, you can find something called railgun casings. These are not needed for most railguns, actually. The railgun shell just needs to have some sort of mass. So we're going to select our shell here. And the different kinetic shells we have is uh, heavy head, armor piercing, sabot and hollow point. Now these have different damage patterns and that's for another video. This is gonna be a hollow point, which means hollow point head and the rest will be solid warhead bodies, just like that. Here we can drag the slider to our desired gauge and I said something like a 200 millimeter. I can have a maximum of 250 millimeter to still get away with the two meter clips. So we need to adjust our clips accordingly. When you're building railguns, you need to have batteries and energy generation. I've set these up for testing purposes and they will provide me the power we need during the tests. When we're done with the railgun, we know exactly how much power it will take and how much we need on the builds that are gonna use it. Now we're gonna already figure out where we want to have our firing piece. When we have decided the location, click G to align it in that direction and just place it down. Backspace lets you uh, place things in the air. Now we need a mantlet. An AA mantlet is always a smart idea. And you cannot place the mantlet uh, in front of a barrel anymore if you use that old trick to protect your railgun chargers. Well, that has been updated away. Now we're gonna add a nice long barrel on this thing to give us some base accuracy. The required length uh, we can check a little bit later when we are basically done with the gun. Now we will need to go to railgun parts and select railgun magnet attacher. So place it uh, on any of the sides of the railgun and these will have connected magnets so they will stick out a little bit. How many magnets we'll need we'll see a little bit later but uh, we can start with adding one for each side until the meantime. And we need to have as many as we require to fire one shot and how much our shot will take we'll see in a little bit. Now we need to connect up some stuff to this little railgun and we have a lot of different pieces here. And railguns that are only powered by rail they don't need any coolers at all. But we'll need a couple of gauge increasers to reach the desired gauge so we might need uh, one cooler just to get an other angle of our gauge increasers. I need four gauge increasers to reach my uh, required gauge. The rest of the places we can fill in with six-way connectors in the meantime. Now we can go into the APS gun and select 250 so we can reach our desired gauge size. And as we already know, we need two meters clip for this thing to work. So now we'll do some uh, APS T-trees. Adding ammo clips on as many sides as possible will give us a faster autoload reload speed um, while keeping down the costs because the autoloaders are more expensive. Now we just need some ammo intakes on each of these units and we can now go into them and select uh, assign all intakes to this ammo controller. Based on the autoloaders we can basically reach a fire rate of 10 RPM. So now we need to match the capacity and the uh, charge rate. Now we're gonna add railgun chargers onto this little thing and as soon as you do that 
you can see it uh, starts spinning like this. A real gun charger, however, costs 400 materials per cylinder. So know that this is where the cost comes into when it uh, when we're talking rail guns. In any case, these are the magnets. The more magnets you have, the bigger shells and the more energy you can put into the shells. Uh, they will not affect the speed of the shell, however. So it's not like they are some kind of accelerators. They just com they just control capacity. Um, of how much magnetic force that can be put into the uh, shell. So we're gonna check how many we need. So we go uh, and if you just look at the stats here, we have a capacity of 10,000. If we go to railgun section here, we can see maximum energy usable for loaded shell is 28,000. So we need to match this value, 28,000. Just drag this up to max, so we have uh, 28,000. Um, and then we'll need to add railgun magnets until we reach the 28,000 uh, limit, which is uh, this many. If you double or triple the capacity, you can make the gun fire uh, in bursts instead of uh, single regular fire. But we're gonna make a simple cannon and not the burst cannon. Also, uh, keep one barrel only because having more barrels will give you more inaccuracy and uh, railguns are especially good for uh, a little bit of more accurate cannons. All right, so if we want to have a 10 RPM, how many of these railgun charges uh, do we need? Well, I'm glad you asked. Just go into the cannon and go to the railgun section, and here you can see charge time, 7.89 seconds. And uh, now we have a rate of fire of 5.72. So we basically just need to add more until the value of this uh, 5.98 okay two more uh, 5.13 yeah look now they're kind of similar so uh, well either the railgun uh, chargers will limit you or the outloaders will limit you but they should be as close as possible for this setup to be as efficient as possible because remember these are kind of expensive now we just need to deal with the recoil. So basically just uh, fit as many recoils absorbers you can inside of this and see if the recoil uh, inaccuracy goes away. And there, we just removed all the inaccuracy from recoil, fantastic. Now we can go to the barrel again and just look at inaccuracy value and just add barrels until you're basically, it's a diminishing return, so just add away until you feel kind of happy with the inaccuracy. And we can probably set the required accuracy before fire to a uh, minimum to make it better. And remember guys, when you fire uh, cannons from long ranges, many kilometers away, uh, you really need to have superb detection with like uh, radar trackers and radar and stuff like that. Otherwise, uh, your super accuracy won't do much. I just realized I built this entire cannon light painted brown, but whatever. I think it's time to test it. Looks like a pretty fast shell to me. If you want to make a railgun even more accurate, you can use percent of energy used for accuracy buff. That will use percent of the energy to make it more accurate. This is great for long range cannons, but you shouldn't have it uh, more than like 20% because of diminishing returns. Under stats, you can have some helping numbers if you want to find out exactly how much energy generation you need on your crafts that will carry this. And of course batteries. Uh, you can see the batteries in the lower right corner and the energy, so um, add enough so it doesn't go low below and it's uh, well bottlenecked by your onboard batteries and energy generation. Here is future Jimodism. The finished turret is here and I just wanted to put in this. If you go to the ammo here, if you want increased speed of the shell, which will give you more damage, which, which is a good idea, uh, then you want to add a base bleeder onto your shell. So uh, this will decrease accuracy, so it's uh, not a good idea for super long range cannons. But if you want more accuracy and you have the space, you can also add stabilizer fin body onto your shell. If you want to see the stats, you need to drag this slider to the max, and you can see here. Having a base bleeder makes it go 200 meters per second faster, just this little change. And the uh, rail stabilizer fins can make your shell more accurate at uh, longer distances. Well, that's all from future Jimidism. This time for once, I'm gonna let you build your own turret armor without showing it in this tutorial. 
If you want to know some great tips on how to build armor for your turrets, please check all my other turret tutorials. Because I think this video is uh, long enough already. In any case, thanks a lot for watching and hope that your railguns will be useful for you. And remember, these can be really accurate cannons, but they require really accurate detection as well. If you want to make your shell go a little bit faster, you might need some uh, railgun casings and you can add that if you need. But remember that this will make them be able to pick up a lot more power, which means you need to adjust the entire turret accordingly. Railguns in From the Depth is a big balancing act like everything else, so I'm sure you can do it. Just look at the numbers. In any case, this is your host Jim Edison, and we're signing out.